Hi everyone, Francisco Guzman here, and today we are here with Lara from Google. Hi, hi, hi everybody. How are you, Lara? I'm really good, and you? Fine, thanks. So um, Lara is a computational linguistic um, specialist, and so um, we invited her because uh, she is working in one of the biggest company in the world. So um, tell us, Lara, first of all, your story. Okay, so I'm Lara. I'm from Italy. I'm 23 years old, almost 24. I just graduated from a master in cognitive sciences and natural language processing from the University of Trento just one week ago. And okay. uh, I'm also, uh, right now I'm a computational linguist uh, here at Google. So before uh, coming uh, here at Google, I had a few experiences uh, in the industry. Okay. The first, uh, okay. the right. first one was uh, with um, IBM when I did an internship uh, uh, last summer as an artificial intelligence specialist. Then uh, I just worked uh, in the development uh, of uh, Samsung Vocal Assistant uh, this, uh, uh, this winter until uh, May. And uh, after that, uh, I started my journey with Google with an internship as a computational linguist. And uh, right now I ended up with a full-time job offer as a computational linguist as well. Congrats, Lara. <laughs> really good. So uh, a lot of people are inviting you. Uh, <laughs> so um, and how are you enjoying now to live in? Uh, are you enjoying living in Dublin, uh, living abroad? How it is? Well, it's kind of a I don't know a bittersweet sentiment in the sense that. Uh, Dublin is a great city, it's really young, there are a lot of uh, big corporates, uh, there is uh, Facebook, there is LinkedIn, there is Google, so actually the tech environment here is uh, um, it's pretty good and uh, there are a lot of young people, okay. so Dublin is a lovely city and uh, also the job is really good, but actually sometimes I really miss Italy and uh, yeah, but uh, overall I think that Dublin uh, is a uh, it's a very good city and I suggest people that are considering to go abroad, I suggest to to just consider Dublin because uh, there are a lot of great uh, um, job opportunities and the quality of life is really good. Okay, okay. So um, Dublin, uh, I, I lived in Dublin, so I, I, I like it and I, I think it's one of the city more uh, comfortable to live maybe not, not comfortable yeah. but it's it's really nice to live in dublin because it's not too big but right. there is a lot of opportunity and you know it's something that um when you go in new york or uh, london you can't say the same you know so um, let's uh, let's think about something else let's think about uh, how was your life before Google mm -hmm. and later we'll see how, how is your life now so you're going to explain us a little bit uh, the, the benefits of Google and mm -hmm. you know there are a lot of stories there are a lot of stories about Google so beautiful stories so right. um, we want to know if it's true so tell us the before and after the, yeah. the work in uh, Google. So actually, I think that the greatest difference is that uh, before I was a student, right now I'm a full time worker. And I think that is kind of a big uh, life change. So uh, actually, before Google and before all my experiences in the job industries, I was just a student and I was studying something that was completely different. So I was studying philosophy at the University of Pavia. But okay. actually, uh, for me, it was kind of uh, not enough in the sense that uh, it was nice. I really enjoyed studying philosophy and I think that uh, it gave me a lot, both in my personal and academic development. But I saw that uh, it was not really what I wanted to do. Okay. So I just started to, uh, I went to Silicon Valley in my first year of university 
thanks to a scholarship. And there I had the opportunity to see what is uh, the life in the big corporates. I visited the Google offices in Mountain View and I was really impressed about that. Oh, okay. So I just uh, tried to think what's the way to, you know, just start uh, uh, doing what I like uh, in a big corporate, in a great environment where, where there is a lot of innovation. So the first thing that I started to learn is just like uh, start to learn programming. Okay. And uh, since I have a humanities background, I was just trying to see if there is an intersection between uh, uh, computer science and the humanities. And I ended up uh, to find the, uh, the branch of computational linguistics. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah, I saw there are also some degrees about uh, computational linguistic and what do you think about that? Uh, do you think, do you recommend to a student that is going to choose what to study or not? Yeah, definitely. And actually, I think that uh, it's a good way for people that have studied humanities to specialize in this kind of degree because there is a lot of work and uh, there is uh, a lack of people that are specialized in this field. So okay. I think that uh, it's if somebody that has studied, uh, I don't know, linguistics or humanities in general, and uh, is also passionate about computer science and artificial intelligence and innovation, I strongly suggest to follow one of uh, these masters. And actually, uh, I can suggest to mine that it was pretty good at the University of Trento. Okay. I think it really opened my lot of op lot of opportunities actually. Okay, and let let uh, let us know something about your life today. So right. let uh, tell us a little bit about uh, Google benefits. Uh, what mm -hmm. do you think there are not in other companies? So which is the difference between yeah. uh, working in Google and uh, working uh, in a small business uh -huh. or uh, working in a startup? Right. So I think that. Uh, well, it seems obvious, but the first benefit that I have is just to work uh, on very interesting projects with very smart people that I think that it, it was kind of the thing that uh, um, pushed me to apply for Google and uh, to stay here at Google instead of going somewhere else. And uh, this is uh, literally the best thing of the work. And uh, actually, uh, it's it's really it's something that uh, really helps you to develop yourself to work surrounded by very smart people okay. but uh, speaking about the benefits that are the ones that google is really famous of for um we have the gym that is something that is really good to to have uh, in your workspace because when you have one hour of free of free time you can just go there and exercise okay and then, <laughs> just uh, stay really in shape because we also have free food and uh, ah. <laughs> Uh, so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> actually, uh, it's good that we have we have both a gym and a swimming pool inside the office, okay. so we can exercise there. We also have uh, training classes uh, okay. with uh, with some uh, personal trainers. Uh, so yeah, it's uh, this is uh, one of the benefits that I like the most. Then there is the free food. That is uh, another thing that Google is really famous for. Okay. Um, <laughs> Because, <laughs> because uh, in other companies, the reason in the I think in startup you can find this type of benefits, and in small business too, because uh, you know <laughs> it's not for all business to have a a, a gym inside of the <laughs> the quarter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, actually, it's a really good way to socialize with your colleagues because you end up to exercise in the same place to eat. Uh, your meals uh, in the same place. So actually you end up knowing a lot of people and this, uh, and this is really good for networking. Okay, okay. So gym is perfect for networking. I think uh, uh, informal place uh, usually stimulate a lot the talks and networking. Mm -hmm. so. Because when you are at work, you uh, sometimes maybe you have fear to speak too much. You know, right. it's not the, the the place where to create friendship yeah. and something like that. So, and in the gym, what do you do? 
are you a <laughs> crossfitter, a, a calisthenics? What do you use more? More, more aerobics, I would say. Ah, okay, 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 yeah. perfect. Aerobics is perfect for your mind. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> it's a good way to just stop uh, doing what you are doing and uh, just relax. Yeah, yeah, okay. So um, let's speak a little bit about uh, how did you get into Google. Mm -hmm. So uh, about tell us a, a little bit about uh, interview, uh, about uh, wrong uh, thought, like, uh, you know, people think that in Google there is a lot of brain teaser or something like that. So tell us uh, how was the interview and what do you recommend to prepare for uh, an interview? Yes, actually, I, I'm not the best person for uh, 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 for people that want to apply as uh, full timers, because my first interview at Google was for the internship. Okay. That I think that is the best uh, way if you want to go in, uh, inside Google. Uh, to, I mean, it's the best way to apply, in my opinion. First, because you actually uh, get a taste on what is the Google life and okay. uh, what are the projects. And uh, actually, since uh, it's an internship, uh, you don't have to do uh, five interviews. But I think that is the standard for uh, a person, uh, an outside person that wants to apply for a full-time job at Google. But okay. you only have to do two or three interviews. That uh, is uh, is better. I mean, it's better. And. Um, Actually, uh, you when you want to convert to full-time employee, you need to do only three other interviews. That is pretty convenient, and actually, you already know what is Google, what the what are the main projects, and uh, people know knows you. So, actually, I suggest if somebody is a student, just to go and try to apply for a, an internship at Google because uh, first is the one. It is an incredible experience. Okay. And that when you want to convert is a. Uh, is one of the best way to do that. Okay, so uh, there are no brain teasers uh, as far as uh, <laughs> I, 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 my opinion. Uh, so I don't know how what's Google policy about that, but for me there were no brain teasers. Okay, uh, I think it's a legend actually. Yeah, but, uh, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so um, so you recommend to to do an internship before and later. To, to go for uh, a full jobs. So, okay. mm. yeah, because uh, it's, uh, it's also not, it's also for you just to understand if you really like uh, Google culture, if you really like to work for a big corporate, or uh, if you prefer to work for a startup. So before going for into a full time uh, permanent employment, yeah, in my opinion, it's good to experiment a little bit. So I would suggest it in any case to all the students that want to try an experience into a big corporate. Okay, perfect. So um, the next question is uh, about your job. Tell us a little bit uh, um, for people that don't know what is um, computational linguist. Uh, uh, what what is that job and what did you learn in Google that you didn't learn before about that job because you know um, when you study when you are at university and you are looking uh, for what to do later uh, mm -hmm. you have a lot of confusion you have um, you don't know what to do and maybe if you know it you are wrong you are <laughs> There are a lot of people that are really uh, focused on what they want to do and when they they get hired in a company, they, mm -hmm. they, they understand that uh, everything was wrong. So tell us a little bit for people that want to do that job, what, um, what is it and what did you learn? Right. So actually, I think that uh, computational linguistics is a um, uh, it's a really uh, a job that uh, can have uh, different uh, uh, competencies. So actually, what I'm doing is uh, on a high level, I'm doing machine learning for text classification. So this is uh, the main uh, my main job. For uh, we classify text for uh, for many reasons, and actually this is uh, uh, the core the core job 
core duties of my job. But uh, there are a lot of opportunities for a, a computational linguist. So, for example, here at Google, linguists are working uh, for um, develop the vocal assistant of Google. That is, okay. uh, I don't know, probably you know Google Home uh, or uh, yeah Google Assistant. Yeah, I, I, I bought too much of them. <laughs> Well, right. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I, I bought the, the first one um, before it, it was uh, launched in Italy because really? I bought yeah I bought it in Dublin uh, and I made a lot of uh, gift to all my familiars and something like that. Yeah, <laughs> I, I bought I think ten of them <laughs> because it yeah because it was something uh, uh, small. Uh, yeah. it's not a gift that you pay too much and right. uh, it's something that is impressive for people so it was perfect yeah that's true that's true <laughs> and actually it's pretty surprising that there are also linguists that are working on that and not only software engineers yeah um, okay but it's something that i want just to uh something that i want to highlight that okay. it seems that the, you know the tech world is uh, only for software engineers it's not the case and uh, actually, if you are, uh, uh, if you like technologies, I think that there is space for almost everybody. Okay. And uh, also for linguists, that is, uh, I mean, there are not a lot of, comput of uh, computational linguists in Google. So Google has, uh, I think, well, I'm not really sure how many employees uh, have Google. I think that uh, in the order of 10, 10 of thousands. Yeah, I okay. And there are only 100 uh, computational linguists. Okay. So, you know, it's a really niche uh, work. Yeah. Okay. A very small percentage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And, and something, um, let's speak uh, a little about something that is not so good about computational linguists. Uh, what you don't like, is there something that you don't like? But actually, I'm really passionate about the topic, so <laughs> it's kind of difficult for me. So I think that the most frustrating thing is that uh, as uh, when you're just working on uh, very new technologies, uh, usually uh, the things are not uh, good uh, at the first tentative, right? Okay. So uh, you are just uh, really working with the trial and errors, uh, and uh, you are small. Uh, you are just doing little step with the. Uh, towards uh, the desired result. But uh, yeah, since it's more like um, a research field, you usually encounter a lot of delusions when you are uh, just working on something new. Okay. That is, I think that is one of the things that I, I mean, I kind of like it because it's really challenging, but the, on the long run, sometimes it's pretty tiring. Okay, so, so it's something that you have to, mm, overpass with your mindset yeah right okay okay perfect so um, tell us a little bit about what are your uh, future dreams yeah so uh, I don't think that I want to leave Google anytime soon so I I actually see my future here okay at least my future in the next uh, four or five years I don't, well, I don't know but uh, for now I really enjoy it uh, and I really like what I'm doing so I think that I will just uh, stay here okay. and um, I don't know just like in terms of goals is just like to improve myself okay. and uh, probably get promoted a few times and work on interesting projects but it's something that I'm already doing so it's not really uh, yeah, I mean, it's just like becoming a better professional, I guess. Okay, okay. And is there something in, uh, is there something in Google like educational program uh, where you can learn something more? Tell us a yeah. little bit about that. Yeah, that's great. So uh, actually Google has a very generous educational policy. And um, if you are, for every training that uh, you are doing, uh, do you reimburse a part of the training? So ah. if a training that is related to the job, so okay. for example, let's assume that they want to do a master uh, in uh, artificial intelligence okay. or uh, in uh, computer science uh, or whatever uh, master is related to my job, yeah. they are paying uh, two-thirds of uh, the cost of the education. Ah. And this can okay. be a lot if you think about it. Yeah. Because, um, 
I mean, they are just paying two thirds of the tuition fee and uh, and everything. But the nice thing is that if you are interested in something else, so for example, I don't know, I want to do a dance class. Okay. Or something that is not really related to work. Uh, Google reimburses you one third of these uh, of these. Really. Fee. Well, yeah. Also, so, if it is outside yeah. of the building. Right, yeah. Yeah. And that's really good, right? Because, for example, let's assume that they want to learn Chinese for my personal development. Yeah. Google is going to reimburse a part of it. And, <laughs> oh, uh, my God. <laughs> it's perfect. So, if you have a, a social life really intense, exactly. it's good. <laughs> okay, that's true. <laughs> then we also have some trainings inside uh, the you know, on the job that uh, where you can uh, connect with uh, other offices, for example, the ones in Mountain Views, the one in Los Angeles. Uh, so it's always uh, a good way of networking and also to learn new things. Okay. Okay. So um, I think uh, I asked you everything I wanted to ask. I, I, I don't know if there is something else I have to ask you. Maybe do you have something you want to say <laughs> something more or uh, some, yes. some uh, recommendation to people that want to, to, to that dream? Maybe because, you know, this video is for people that dream to work in a big company that have never tried to, to do an interview or they mm -hmm. tried but they didn't pass it so, yeah, yeah. Mm, so do actually, you have some, yeah. reco some recommendation for them and if yes what are these recommendations yeah so actually uh, i want just to recommend that if uh, you're really motivated to work uh, for google just not to give up uh, if you are rejected the first time because as you know uh, the um uh, the rate uh, of uh, job uh, offerings uh, are really, really, really low. So okay. it's kind of, uh, uh, I think that uh, Google wants just to, uh, I mean, uh, there are a lot of people that uh, have tried to uh, apply, have applied to Google and they didn't pass the first run, but they ended up to be a successful Googlers uh, uh, some interviews later. So okay. if you have accepted the first time just try again because sometimes uh, there are so many things that can go wrong or you might not be used to this kind of interviews uh, so just give a try and uh, uh, if uh, you didn't pass just try again if you're <laughs> to, to do that and actually if you are not uh, if you are not feeling uh, um, confident that you will pass the interview just try in any case because uh, otherwise at least it's practice and uh, you can just try again another time. But uh, I really encourage you, if you have uh, any uh, ambition to work in, in Google or uh, to work in other companies, just to give a try to, and to try to have an interview. Just okay. also to understand the process. Okay. Yeah, because I told you, uh, there are a lot of people that don't try it and maybe don't dream it. There are a lot right. of people that don't dream it, but it's possible and you are the proof. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah so, it is. There are a lot of people that are working here. Yeah, and there are 10,000 people. people. <laughs> there are 10,000 people. So come on, let's do it. So yeah. um, next question. Uh, what do you think about the, the new job? Because uh, your job, it's uh, a new job. Uh, yeah. the, the new economy and uh, new tech jobs and something like that. What do you recommend to people that uh, I think we are lucky because uh, we was born uh, more or less in the same year. Yeah. So yeah. Um, we, we, we lived with the technology, but uh, people that don't really understand the technology, what do you recommend to, uh, to them? Yeah. So actually I think that, uh, uh, since uh, this uh, this kind of job uh, is really evolving, it's uh, there. I mean, you need to build your competencies over time. So the first thing that that I recommend is just uh, if you feel that you're really passionate about a topic, just to start uh, studying it and try to find uh, the best people uh, uh, to whom uh, you can learn something. Okay. So, for example, let's assume uh, uh, let's speak about blockchain. Yeah. It is something that I'm not really into that, so I really know not. <laughs> so 
<laughs> it was uh, something that uh, has been uh, that was developed in the in the last years. Yeah. And before that, a lot of job uh, about blockchain didn't exist at all. So yeah. actually, uh, if you see that you, there is something uh, that you are really interested in in this kind of uh, uh, ambits uh, that are just going really fast, just start studying it and start uh, speaking to people that are working in this uh, in this kind of field. And uh, I think that uh, you will be able to to just uh, find your spot in this kind of uh, of environment. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I think it's uh, it's all we we covered each of uh, the questions I had. So if you have uh, any other question, uh, post it in the comments and write us. Um, yeah. So thank you. Thank you a lot. Thank you.